welcome to another vlog of mine. We are currently in my little reading room and it's a little dim in here because I'm keeping the curtains closed because it's supposed to be really hot today. Today I think is Sunday, June 26th and I am still finishing up with one of my June reads which is Vengeful by V. E. Schwab. If you don't know, uh, Vengeful is the sequel to Vicious which is, um, these books are in the Villains trilogy. The premise of these books is basically in um, in a reality that's a lot like ours. There are people who exist called Extraordinaries, and they have powers kind of like the X-Men. The way they obtain these powers are pretty dark and gruesome, but I love these books. They're very, very character-centric, very fast-paced, pretty gritty, I would say. It gets dark. It gets questionable. A lot of the characters are morally gray. I am really loving the sequel. So yeah, I have to finish this one up. I'd like to finish this one up today at some point so I can get started on my July books. The Pariah is the first book in my July list that I want to get to. I did get this as an ARC, an advanced reader copy. It's supposed to be about uh, our main character who is a thief and who ends up somehow in the king's army and he's working for a lady and he gets involved in war and politics and I guess the whole premise is is he going to keep his thieving ways or is he going to integrate into this noble world so I am very interested in starting this one super excited I want to get to it today the goal is to finish it sometime this week because then, as you can see, I have the Priory of the Orange Tree over here. I really do want to get to this one as well. It's very chunky. I'm not expecting myself to finish this one this week, but I hope to get through at least quite a bit of it and be able to finish it early in the month. And on top of that, um, in my... TBR tarot game, I talked about how Ryan picked this book for me. The dogs are outside, you can probably hear them. Uh, Romeo and or Juliet by Ryan North. Ryan picked this book, it's an interactive type of book, so this book I'm kind of just always going to be reading throughout the month, kind of as like an in-between other books to, I don't know, I guess maybe play one of the games that are in here, whatever Oh my gosh. <laughs> Anyways, so this one's going to be like a permanent book throughout the month. Fun thing just happened. It's like, it's like 11 o'clock-ish almost, and the dogs were out. And we have skunks. They found one. And they killed it. And it smells. So now we have a dead skunk and two stinky dogs. And I'm lighting a bunch of candles. Maybe next time, leave the skunk alone? Hey, uh, doing a bit of a check-in because I realize that I did not really check in yesterday at all. So, as we know, as you can probably see, the puppies are very tired. So Sunday night, they killed a skunk. I'm sorry for the noise. I have the AC running right now. Um, it's really hot out today. It's getting up into the hundreds. So, because the dogs had that whole skunk situation on Sunday night, Monday, Ryan had to take the day off work. And so Monday, we just cleaned the house. So, um, Monday wasn't a huge reading mood day. I ended up finishing Vengeful, even though I had intended to finish it on Sunday, but I didn't really time myself very well. So I did finish Vengeful, and I loved it. Absolutely loved it. So 
loved Vengeful, the characters, the fast pace of it. Kind of disappointed that I didn't finish it earlier. Again, like Sunday night, Sunday I didn't really time myself very well. And then Monday was not much of a reading day, but I finished it nonetheless. So I did get started on um, the Pariah. Now I don't have an e-reader or anything, so I use, I have a Surface Pro and I figured out how to uh, get the um, ebook on my Surface Pro. And I did, I did read a chapter. I really like the beginning. It starts off uh, basically with thieves. That's literally how it's starting off. Um, starting off gruesome as well, which I enjoy. <laughs> what can I say? I like brutality. Everything is set in first person, which I was actually kind of surprised. I feel like a lot of um, fantasy books I've been reading have been third person, but this one's in first person. Uh, our main character right now is not interesting me too much, but I think it's because it's mostly kind of setting everything up. I did like highlight some parts for me to remember certain characters because I feel like they're gonna come up later. Um, but really so far, so far I like the writing. I'm interested. That's all I can say. If, <laughs> if a book can make me interested within the first chapter, then I'm good. Dog, your breath stinks. And why do you have to lick your parts? All right, let's give her some privacy. All right, I'm up, I'm dressed, and I'm ready for my day, which is not really going to be a hard day. Here's a puppy. Hi, boopers. Good morning, boopers. Your breath still stinks like skunk. I did end up getting to... It's an... It's like an ebook, so I don't really know how accurate the pages are, but I did get to page 80. In the pariah, I'm just gonna sit down. I need to like do a whole bunch of stuff, but I'm gonna sit down for now. Hi kitty, good morning. I'm interested in kind of this implication of all these different political figures. Um, they've talked about a duke that has been executed, I guess, and there's that pretender king, which I'm assuming has actually been killed. Um, Really, there's a whole bunch of this, like, political stuff happening. I'm a little confused on how it works, but the basics of what I'm understanding is that there was a king in the south that was uh, pretending to essentially offer a better life, a better rule than um, the... <laughs> Sorry, the cat's playing with the dog's tail. Um, can you... No? Okay. Oh. With her breath. Oh, okay. Oh, so, yeah, so there's that Pretender King, um, which has been taken out. And so I'm guessing that these outlaws, because you're following your main character, Alwyn, who is an outlaw, and he has... Um, it looks like the Outlaw King, which uh, is obviously the ruler of all these outlaws, is trying to gain a political standing because he calls himself the outlaw king but he's not actually a king at all but he does want some kind of standing somewhere where his position will be fixed i guess um so with all this like political maneuvering and plotting there seems to be i don't know it it seems like something's going to happen like something's gonna go wrong is basically what i'm feeling there seems to be this build-up happening where something is gonna go wrong and I feel like it's going to be caused by one particular character that honestly just gives off some really bad serial killer vibes. You know what I mean? Like, can't help himself, just has to kill someone. It feels like he's gonna make a big oopsie. <laughs> and no one really seems to like him that much. Um, now, um, the main character is... I mentioned it before it's in first person he actually breaks the fourth wall and talks to you and says dear reader uh because what is it in the last chapter i read he actually says to you i should have done something and you will see why i will later regret not having done that thing so i am really enjoying that i personally feel like there aren't enough books that have 
a narrator who's telling you the story from their perspective and they break the fourth wall and talk to the reader. I don't know why I really enjoy that because that makes the story feel more real. The writing is, um, how would I almost describe it? Like a medieval um, sort of dialogue, but it's not hard to read. It's actually quite, it's just, it, it's, I don't know. It's a good, I like it. It really fits the ambiance of the story in itself. Um, but right now I got to take care of these guys, turn on the AC because today is going to be really, really hot. Uh, hotter than yesterday, even though Ryan said yesterday at his shop it got to like 100 degrees. So. Yay! <laughs> but yeah, I will catch you guys in a bit. Um, I don't want to get up. I want to keep reading. So I ordered food, uh, but I did have to edit a video, which I think it just finished whatever it is finalizing, so I need to get that scheduled for tomorrow. Um, but yeah, I ordered food that will be here in like 40 minutes, so I'm going to get the video thing going, read more when the food gets here. I don't know, I'll pick something to watch or something like that, but yeah. I'm lazy today. I also, like, it's not easy for me to leave my house and go pick up some food. I have to drive, like, 10-15 minutes to go pick up food, so I just have it delivered. I'm lazy. I cooked yesterday. Not today. <laughs> not today. Hello! Little check-in. Um, I just got back home from work, so this feels really good. So I finished the pariah. Yesterday, I do not believe I did any kind of update on that, um, but The Pariah was really good. I, there were a few moments that I was like, I feel like there's too much in this book because it's basically, it is exactly a epic fantasy with so much adventure. It can get very gory at times, which I was totally for. And the world building overall is very intriguing. I will say it's very focused on the religious aspect of its fantasy world. Which was, you know, it was a nice story to follow, especially since your main character, which is your narrator, is very pessimistic and kind of neutral in all of it. Like, he doesn't really care. All he wants is to get revenge, but even at that point, he's not really seeking out revenge at a certain point. It's more like he is just trying to survive. Overall, I will say the book, super well written. It was neither too slow nor too fast for the story it was telling. It is not a character-driven story, so if you are a character-driven reader, this book is not for you. All the characters were interesting, but there was no real development in any of them. It's a lot more about the plot, about what's happening, about the interactions and kind of the consequences and... Honestly, there was a moment in the book where I was like, oh my gosh, there's just so much happening and I'm not, like, I feel like there are things that I have accepted but haven't been giving full answers. And by the end of the book, I had all my answers and it ended so well, I cannot wait for the second book and this one isn't even published yet. So The Pariah will be out, uh, I believe, on the 24th of August. Now, I did also start uh, The Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon which I'm not going to hold up for you because it is a big book. It's about, it's actually, it's mostly chunky, but it's only about like 800, 800 and some odd pages. Um, I only got to like page 30 so far, but it, oh, this one has a very complex world and so far just so many characters but what i'm getting right now is that on one side of the world there is a young girl who um has essentially been chosen to be in what they call the sea guard i guess uh which means that essentially she will have a chance to possibly become a dragon rider the dragons in this book uh, or at least the ones who that are revered and very powerful and very um respected are water dragons and I believe that the lesser ones, the ones that are more evil, are fire dragons. At least that's so far, that's what I'm understanding. And on the other side of this world, I don't know if there's an ocean in between or something, the maps are split up. Uh, there is a queen who I guess is in danger constantly, which is 
something that happens to the royals in this line. Uh, so yeah, that's basically where I'm at. Oh, there's also a stranger who I'm not entirely sure what his role is yet, but I feel like it's going to be very important because it seems like he ran away from something or uh, he's on a mission to do something. And then there's a queen and her like a maid in waiting or, or lady in waiting or something who seems very like knightly, like like a badass bitch. Um, at least that's the impression I'm getting so far. But yeah, I'm not very far into the Prior of the Orange Tree. And then finally, um, Romeo and or Juliet. I forgot his name. I think it's Noah Ryan or Ryan Noah or something. Um, I did continue that today. I was a little disappointed pointed because so it's kind of playing like a game right so you pick either to be Romeo or Juliet I picked Romeo and like you pick different paths I guess like you read a part and it says um go to 53 if you want to have breakfast or go to 36 if you want to kiss this girl that's an example so you kind of jump around and what I was doing it just ended so I'm like oh okay I guess I'll go back to the character selection and play Juliet so it is very interesting in how like you select the path to take but i do feel like that romeo path was just very abrupt i'm not sure if maybe it's this i don't know i don't know um i still think it's a fun format but there are some things that i thought was a little weird like there's a moment where it describes what eating is and i was like uh don't think I'm really enjoying the way that this Romeo and Juliet tale is being told. I don't know. I'll have more thoughts on that in the future. But yeah, I thought I'd just do a quick little update um, because, well, now I have to go do a bunch of stuff. So I will check in with you guys um, probably in a couple days because I'm not great at doing actual like day-to-day -day vlogs. And I also think that that would be too long. So I will catch up with you guys later. Okay, hi. Um, just got back home from work and I have a few things I need to unbox. We're gonna start with Book of the Month. I actually did do an add-on, which I didn't think I would do, but it was a free add-on that I could have. Um, surprisingly enough, the books that I picked are not books that I definitely would have picked, that would have I would have bought myself, but I'll just show you guys. The first book, book I got was Razorblade Tears by S.A. Cosby. It's about two dads who are trying to find their son's killers. Their sons were gay and they didn't really accept it very much, but they also are not happy that someone killed their kids. So that's all I know about this. Two dads who are trying to essentially find their son's killers and I'm hoping that it's going to be a story about uh, fathers who learn to accept their kids basically is really what I would like but um, I am interested in reading it and this cover is actually very nice. The next book that I got was Sisters in Arms. This one's by Kaya Alderson. Um, this is supposed to be I guess kind of a history of black women uh, during World War II. I think it's two women um, Grace Steele and Eliza Jones uh, from completely different backgrounds, but they join the Women's Army Corps. Whack. <laughs> so, yeah. now we're gonna get to Unplugged because I, I think this month there are two books. I think. I might be wrong. Maybe it's next month. Uh, again, for both of these boxes, I will put links in the description if you want to check them out. Unplugged is a book box and a self-care subscription, so it doesn't only come with a book, it also comes with a whole bunch of other stuff from bookish, um, small, oh geez, from bookish small businesses. There we go. I got it. So this month the theme was Fearless. I do get the adult fiction box. Unplugged has the option for young adult and adult. I pick the adult box. This month is Fearless, and there are the spoilers on the back, so we'll check that out later. Ooh, that's pretty. Oh, wow, this is really cute. Dickinson's Pure Honey. This is just honey. Okay, cool. I like that. What is this? Wow, it looks like there's a lot of stuff in this month's box, which I am super stoked about. I'm going to say, Unplugged, I really really enjoy their boxes every month. I look forward to it so much. 
I believe this might be like a kitchen towel. I can't, I'm sorry, I put my camera so close today, but can't really see all of it, I think. It says, when I have a house of my own, I shall be miserable if I have not an excellent library. Oh yeah, I, I agree with that one. Oh, is this, I think I know what this is. I believe this is a tool to press lemons because it's hot and it's summer and we all need lemons. The one lemon squeezer to rule them all. It has like an etching on it. I don't know if you can see that, but that is funny. There's a oh, honey stick and it has something printed on it. The classic honey scooper and it says the pedigree of honey does not concern the bee. A clover, any time, to him is a, a aristocracy. Okay, this looks kind of complicated. I don't know what this is. Um, this is herbal cold brew tea. This sounds really good. And it comes with a strainer. That is, so, I have so many tea strainers. <laughs> I drink so much tea. I really am more of a tea drinker than I am a coffee drinker. This is cute. It's got like a little butterfly and I guess you can like pin it to your glass. Oh, I, there's just the redness of this bottle, I like. Um, this is avocado body butter, okay. Tea cake, books, mystery, Eloise. I think we have a bookmark. Oh, I feel like this is the kind of bookmark I might end up coloring in. Gargoyle Queen. Capture the crown, tear down the throne, conquer the kingdom. I adore the art on the back of the author's letter. And I always put these in the books. So I can... Oh, yes, there are two books because there are two letters. I got a second letter and this one has this art on the front. I love these things. I like, they're like postcards. And then we've got a signature for one of the books. And then there's a card here, journal prompts and ways to embrace courage, right? Cause the theme is fearless. So the Gargoyle Queen um, bookmark was definitely alluding to Capture the Crown by Jennifer S. Estep. And I believe this is a new series. Yeah, it's a new series, the Gargoyle Queen series. It's a little long, but I'll read it if you want to skip. Go for it. Gemma Ripley has a reputation for being a pampered princess who is more interested in pretty, pretty gowns, sparkling jewelry, and other frivolous things than in learning how to rule the kingdom of Endvari. But her carefully crafted persona is just an act to hide the fact that she is a powerful mind magir and a spy. Gemma is undercover, trying to figure out who is stealing large amounts of tear stone from one of the Ripley royal mines. When she encounters Prince Leonidas, Morcone of Morta, whatever that means, her mortal enemy! Oh no! Gemma tries to steer clear of the handsome prince, but when she finds herself behind enemy lives, lines, she reluctantly joins forces with Leonidas, of course. Also coming to Gemma's aid is Grimly, her beloved gargoyle. That sounds cool. Despite the fact that Envari and Morta are old, bitter enemies, a dangerous attraction sparks between Gemma and Leonidas, further complicating matters in Leonidas's murderous family, especially Queen Maven Morricone, the mastermind behind the infamous Seven Spire ma Massacre. Ooh. The closer Gemma gets to the stolen tear stone, the more deep, deadly plots she, under she uncovers. Everyone is trying to capture the crown, but only one queen can sit on the throne. All right, so sounds like enemies to lovers, maybe even a cool um, familiar, which is gonna be a gargoyle and some spying and yeah, sounds fun. And the next book is The Stranger Behind You. 
by Carol Goodman. Journalist Joan Lurie has written a seething article exposing a notorious newspaper tycoon as a sexual predator, but the night it goes live, she is brutally attacked, traumatized and suffering the effects of a concussion. She moves into a highly secure apartment building in Manhattan called The Refuge, which was at one time a Magdalen laundry. Joan should be safe there. So how can she explain the cryptic incidents that are occurring? Lillian Day is Joan's new 96-year-old neighbor at the refuge in 1941. Lillian witnessed a murder, a mysterious murder, that sent her into hiding at the Magdalene Laundry. And she hasn't come out since. As she relates her harrowing story to Joan, Joan sees striking similarities to her own past. Melissa Osgood, newly widowed and revengeful, has burning questions about her husband's recent death. She ha when she discovers a suspicious paper trail that she left behind, she realizes how little she knew about her marriage. But it seems Joan Lurie might be the one who has the answers. As these three lives intersect, each woman must stay one step ahead of those who are desperate to make sure the truth is never uncovered. Huh. Alright, murder mystery. And for August themes, uh, the adult fiction theme is Come As You Are, and the young adult one is Something Wicked This Way Comes. Those are the August themes, and there are little sneak peeks on the back. Oh, right, my spoiler card. Where did that one go? All right, let's see what everything was. Pride and Prejudice Tea Towel. Okay, so that's what this one is. Uh, Emily Dickinson Honey and Dipper. All Boys Aren't Blue Tea. It doesn't say if it's a black tea or not. I don't think so. And Butterfly Tea Strainer, which came with the tea. Lord of the Rings Lemon Squeezer, right? One squeezer to rule them all. Bridgerton Body Butter. Really? Is that what that is? Okay. Capture the Crown and the Stranger Behind You. Cool. Oh, man. All right. This was really cool. So that's a lot of books. I got four books. Always makes me happy to get more books. <laughs> I don't have an update for my books right now. Uh, I'll give an update. A little later on everything that I've read. So I'm still currently reading Prior of the Orange Tree. I'm also still reading the Romeo and or Juliet. Kind of. It's a little, sh it's kind of hard for me to say that I'm reading that book. I'll update you guys more on those reads in a little bit. I'll catch y'all later. Hey, I needed to do a vlog update. Um, I did not finish the Prior of the Orange Tree. I'm barely halfway. I'm at page 344 out of 805. I am very much enjoying it. I don't think that I did um, like a nice full sort of update on the Prior of the Orange Tree. Um, I have been annotating it because there are a lot of characters to keep up with. They're very interesting. They all have different backgrounds. Um, so yeah, this is a very, very good book. I'm very much enjoying it. It is taking me a lot longer than I would like to to get through it. I'm actually very tired right now, so I don't know if I'm going to be able to read much. Um, but yes, very awesome book. I'm sad I haven't been able to finish it for this vlog, but it will be finished for the next one. So... That's it for this vlog. Um, overall, I really liked The Pariah. I also, right, I also said I would kind of give an update on... Baby's barking. <laughs> that I would give an update on the Romeo and or Juliet. It just feels like the overall, like, um, the interactiveness is actually very short and doesn't really matter. Like, the slightest little thing will give you a very strange ending, but it happens so quickly, and I kind of leaf through the whole book. There are so many endings. I don't know. I feel like it's kind of unsatisfying to be doing the same story over and over again with just slight changes to it. I think it's a funny book. 
I guess maybe fun as well, but I'm having a hard time wanting to like continue seeing the different endings and possibilities I can get because in all honesty, the only thing that's really changing all that much are the endings, but there are so many of them that you have to replay so many times that all I want to do is just basically read the endings and see what they are. So yeah, a little disappointed with that book. And then last thing, I did start listening to the audiobook for One by One by, I think it's Ruth Ware. Um, this is for my uh, book club group with my library, but I actually won't be able to go to the meeting time because of work, because I work at that time that we usually meet. So I'm probably not going to be able to meet with my book club this month. I will still try and listen to it. I'm not super interested in it right now, to be completely honest, but I'll try. Yeah, so that's basically more of a wrap-up of how the beginning of my month of July has been going. That's it for this vlog. If you liked it, go ahead and like, subscribe, comment down below, anything you want to do, really, say, whatever. And there are links down below for anything else you might want to check out. Um, I do have these books, well, The Prior of the Orange Tree and all the other audiobooks that I listen to linked down below uh, with bookshop.org links, which is a bookstore that focuses on selling the books while still supporting small book businesses, so check them out and purchase through them because it helps your local bookstores. So yeah, I will catch you all next time. Bye. Thank you.